All right, I had a chance to be on TV with the candle stuff and I really messed it up. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcrafted and today I wanted to talk about a particular incident that I think everybody's gonna enjoy and it's also one of those things that uh, I tell people all the time and I didn't follow my own advice and that is don't get into something that basically don't get into candle making melts uh, situations that you don't know well or that you just don't do to try and kind of please a customer or a client that's coming in a wholesale. It definitely happens with wholesale clients. And this is definitely a tale where I jumped into something thinking I could do it. I, uh, and then finding out very quickly that I was not equipped for this at all. So to start out, if you've been following me for any length of time, I always tell people to, especially in the Facebook group, and again, if you're not on there, you can find the link in the video description down below, or just go to Facebook and type in DIY candle making, beginner to advanced, and it's usually the top. But I always tell people when they're doing wholesale orders or anything like that, especially when you're first starting out, you want to meet everybody's expectations. You really want those first orders. When you're a brand new candle maker and somebody comes to you, with an order for a hundred candles, you wanna bend over backwards and do everything for it. And this is advice I'm gonna tell you, I didn't even follow myself when it came to this. I'm usually very good at this. If somebody comes to, to me with an order that I just can't do, I'll let them know. Uh, I can't get it done in that amount of time. I can't do that many orders. I can't do that many orders that quick. And I usually pass it off to somebody who is a little bit more capable, somebody that I know does wholesale orders in that quantity. And again, with the candles, it's not because I couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it in that amount of time. And I definitely tell people to keep your prices where they are. You're gonna run into people who want to get the best price for their candles, which is understandable, of course, because when I go to get products, I want to get the best price possible, and that's what they're trying to do. So I see a lot of people in the groups, and again, I did it in the very beginning, where somebody came to me with an order, and they wanted a little bit cheaper. Uh, and in the very beginning, it was like maybe 24, 36, 48 candles, or whatever it was, and I did lower it down probably 50 cents, almost a dollar per candle. And by the time I was done with it, there was almost no profit left over. So I really spent, I literally spent a weekend making a bunch of candles for a profit that did not make sense to me. I, I did that one time and that's the last time I ever did that. And that's why I share that on videos like this <laughs> so that people definitely don't make the same mistakes that I did. But forget all that, getting into the TV opportunity that I definitely messed up. Uh, now, doing the channel for as many years as I have now, I've had a lot of people come to me for various things, for magazine articles, for interviews, anything like that. And I've been approached probably about three different times for various TV shows. And the first two, they were easy to kind of put aside because they wanted me to fill out the application, which I did, uh, but they were looking for something that I just don't do. And I let them know that up front. They were looking for basically candle makers and obviously they're going to YouTube because, because the platform is a little bit bigger. There are people that know. So if somebody's watching the TV show, they'll probably get viewers based on that. And of course the applications are very basic. Uh, you go through, tell them what, you've, what you do, tell them how long you've been doing it, tell them a little bit about yourself. We do uh, a video recording just like this and send it to them. And then they want to see kind of your wildest candle creations, your most creative, anything like that. And when it comes down to it, I make candles in a jar. There's not much you're going to do with this that's going to look amazing on TV. So the first two, I definitely didn't get any further than the application, which I knew I wouldn't because again, there's not much you can do with a, a vessel like that. I mean, you can put a little... You can put a little bit around the vessel, but it's not gonna be TV worthy. So the third time somebody reached out to me, it was a producer for the HBO show Craftopia, which is hosted by Lord DIY, who is huge on YouTube for all DIY stuff. It was a new show that they were coming out with. And for the upcoming season, they were gonna be doing right around Christmas time, kind of a holiday themed candle. So of course I talked to him on the phone a few times, uh, very persuasive. Uh, first off, he asked me, do you think you can do this? And I said, well, I really don't. It's it's not an area that I typically do. I make, I make candles in jars uh, and it's just not really something that is gonna look good on TV. So I let him know up front. And then he went into a little bit further explanation on what he wanted and it didn't seem too far out of the realm of my possibilities. So I started to think about it a little bit more. And even before I went down that path, I absolutely recommended him to AJ the Candle Chef. And if you haven't seen his, his stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and link it down below. Uh, but 
I said, this is the guy you want to talk to. These are the candles that are going to look good on TV. Uh, it's a little bit more in line with what you're looking for. And if you haven't seen him, they're the big, really nice dessert candles. Or, I mean, he does some stuff. And he was actually on a TV show. Ended up making something that looked like a big TV dinner. And he does amazing work along with Rose Barnes. And again, if you haven't seen her stuff, I'll try to link it down below. But she was actually on the TV show or that particular episode of another show with AJ. So he still kept asking me about, about what I could do and what they wanted to do on the show was put together. Basically, I would be the demonstration for uh, the kids that would come in and actually build the candle. So it was something that they were trying to put together really quick. And obviously, it's going to go down to melts, wax that cools really quick, which is why I started to think about it a little bit more, even though it's not my area. And what they wanted to do was have kind of a bigger display, probably two to three feet in height. And one of the ideas that they had was uh, Santa Claus falling down the chimney. So it would have been a chimney and just a mold of Santa Claus. Uh, I figured that one not too bad. That was kind of easy to put together. I mean, I've definitely done molds and everything like that. So putting together some slabs, kind of cutting some wax out of it, making it look like red brick and then finding just a mold that I could probably take of like a plastic Santa Claus and make it didn't sound too far out of the realm of possibilities. And when the guy was talking to me about it, it, I was definitely thinking about it because the way he was presenting it in the beginning was very easy, just colored wax, nothing real, nothing real crazy. There was no intricate designs or anything. So I let him know that I could probably do the Santa Claus. I'd have to find some molds. I don't know how quick I could put it together. And then the second option he had was a skyscraper, just a big, tall three foot building uh, with some windows, maybe some treatment, stuff like that, maybe uh, some other things on it to kind of make it stand out a little bit, maybe some lights on the inside of it. And this is where I definitely bit off more than I could chew because I thought, OK, that's just a straight building, four separate slabs of wax, cut some windows in it. Uh, use some different dyes to make the building like a gray color. Uh, he wanted some trees around it. I figured trees are easy enough to mold, uh, make those a green dye color. So I said, yeah, you know what? The skyscraper wouldn't be too bad. I can definitely do that one. So let's go ahead and do it. I'll grab some wax. Uh, I'll put it together for you real quick, send you some pictures and kind of see what you think. And that's definitely where it went off the rails because soon after that, uh, it basically got to a point of, scope creep. And if you don't know what scope creep is, it's when you start a project and some, even as you're doing the project from step one to step 10, uh, somebody is just feeding in new information as you go along, uh, basically creeping into the scope of what the project is, adding more things. When you're halfway done, can you do this or can you add this? And going through school for graphic design and computer science, I used to build websites so I know exactly what scope creep is. Uh, I've dealt with it in the past and I know how to get around it. And again, this project started to get started to get a little bit out of hand because more stuff started to come in. So I initially started with uh, just different colored dyes. I was making some, and I'll go ahead and put some pictures up here. I was making the slabs, which were incredibly easy. I think I was using 4625 and 6006. So it was a little easier to work with. It cooled nice and quick. The 4625 was a harder wax, so it snapped. It gave, uh, it made the building like nice and rigid. It wasn't going to fall apart. And then, of course, I started putting that together, get the buildings done. I had probably the first couple layers done. And then he said, hey, can we cut out some windows? Started to get those done. Then I started to make some thinner sheets of wax where I was just going to cut those out. They were colored. Uh, we're going to call those the windows. We were basically trying to make it easy for kids to do this. So it was going to be real quick and easy melts, something that they could put together. I mean, they've got to do this whole project, I believe on the show within an hour or two. So they don't get much time, which is why I initially jumped onto this one, because if it was going to be real basic stuff, basic building blocks, just make it look good, easy to cut out, easy to color. I can do that. That's no problem. But like I said, scope creep started to come in. Uh, I had the blocks already cut up, put together. And then he wanted to cut out the windows. So I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and try it. We'll cut out the windows. <clears throat> so I went through, started to cut out the windows. They didn't look too bad. And then he wasn't too thrilled with the color of the wax dye. And then, of course, I was sending him update pictures through the whole thing. And again, he wanted this done in 48 to 72 hours. I think I had a three-day weekend to do this. And I knew it was going to be crunch time. But again, going for a basic setup, it shouldn't have been too bad. Uh, but an hour, two hours, three hours into it, 
Uh, he wanted to try some paints. What do different paints look like? And instead of reaching out to somebody like AJ and say, hey, what's the best possible paints I can use to make the wax look good? I just went with some paints that I already had that that you can use on wax, but I hadn't really tested it the way that I needed to for a project like this. So I started to cut out the windows. I started to paint the building. I started to paint other things on it. We had the tree molds. And I'd say probably a good four or five hours into this monstrosity I, it was already falling apart. I knew this was a disaster. I I even told the guy, I said, this is definitely not going to be what you want it to be. So I can still finish if you want me to, or we can go ahead and scrap this because it's definitely not going to, it's not TV worthy. I mean, three hours into it, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm putting this on TV. This is embarrassing. But he still wanted to go through with it, still wanted to finish it. So I literally spent the entire weekend li working all day into the night all day the next day into the night. And then by the time this thing was done, I, I honestly didn't even want to send him the last picture. It was so bad. And it was all because I let somebody else uh, kind of move me in a direction that I knew I shouldn't have gone in a project like this. I know what I'm comfortable in. I know what kind of candles I do well. And again, at the beginning of this project, this is a project that I can do well but I need more time to do this. And I even told him at the beginning that it would take a certain amount of time, probably a week or two weeks to really get this dialed in. Uh, and that's where he kind of talked me back into doing something real simple and basic because the kids are going to have to do it within an hour or two. And again, that's not his fault. Uh, I definitely should have been even more upfront uh, and let him know that it's just not what I do. So all in all, that was the final piece right there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I look at it today, it's unbelievable, it's so bad. I mean, if you could have seen that thing in person, it it looks even more hideous than this picture, I hope, does it justice. But again, I learned a very valuable lesson in not to dip my toes too far into projects that I can't do or jobs that I can't handle and definitely go about it and be comfortable in saying, here's what I can do, here's the price it's gonna be, Here's the timeline it's going to be. And if they want to move on, they're going to move on because it, you may lose that one. Anybody out there that's doing this, like I said earlier, with wholesale contracts or anything like that, you may lose that customer, but there's going to be another one coming along. So that's pretty much it with this one. I hope you got a good laugh out of the, uh, the skyscraper there and uh, we'll see you in the next video.